In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a secure shell on SSH. And what this will allow you to do is allow you to bypass firewall restrictions. If any ports are blocked on a network, whether it be a corporate network, home network, school, work, whatever, um, this will allow you to bypass that. Any websites, say MySpace is blocked, Facebook, gaming sites, whatever, this can also be used as a workaround. Um, proxies, a lot of times, may allow you to access certain sites, but then again, proxies may be blocked as well. Um, also, Proxies don't bypass the port blocks on the actual firewall, and this will allow you to bypass that, any port restrictions that are currently out there. Essentially what this will do is it will create a uh, secure anonymous connection from your remote location to your home network. So you can be doing whatever activity you like, accessing whatever you like through this secured connection that the administrators will have no access to see the activities of this connection. And you'll be doing this as though you're on your home network, even though you're at a remote location. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how this is done. Uh, first thing we're going to need is we're going to need an SSH client. There's a few out there. One free alternative is called OpenSSH, is what, and that's what we're going to be using. Um, originally, it was designed for Linux, but I think there's a um, there's a Windows version we can get. So if you just search in OpenSSH and then type Windows, do a Google search for that. And it should be the very top one, sshwindows.sourceforge.net. So you can just click on that and scroll down to Downloads and select binary installer releases and once this is done we should get a directory we just expand this here and download this setup ssh381 and let that download now I already downloaded it so I can speed things up a bit so it'll come in a RAR archive you can just execute this executable from here it says I already have it installed because I do so I can just proceed with this installation hit next hit I accept hit next um, we want all this installed. I always don't check that, but we want the client and the server installed. So hit next. Specify location. I recommend doing if you have a um, standard 32-bit operating system, you don't have to worry about this. If you have a 64-bit operating system, you're going to have an x86 in a regular programs uh, program files directories. Make sure you install it in the program files directory. Um, even though this isn't specifically designed for 64-bit, um, it's still wise to install it in here because I had some issues when I installed in my uh, default directory, my 32-bit directory. So just keep it in your program files directory. I think it's hard-coded to do whatever it does within this specified directory. So leave it like that and hit next and hit install. It'll remove my current folder and it's going to give us a pop-up. Hit OK for that and hit finish. So once that's complete, I can close out of this. And we want to proceed with the next step, which is going to be to download another program that already comes with OpenSSH, but we're going to get an updated version to avoid some complications. So we're going to just do a Google search for CYGWIN. And we can go ahead and click on this. And we'll be at we the website here. We can scroll down, just click on the setup.exe, and that'll download the setup package for that. And like I said, I already have all this downloaded, so I can just run the setup, hit run, hit next. Um, go ahead and leave that first one installed for a minute, hit next. And install it to the root, your root of your C drive. Um, so this, in this case, it's going to be C slash and then the name of the program. Um, if there's any spaces in it, it'll cause complications, so just leave it as its default. And uh, I just left it at the top one as well, just hit next. And it'll ask you where you want to put the uh, install packages, just leave that as is, it's just a temporary location, hit next, um, direct connection, hit next, and proceed with the installation from there. Once that's installed, we want to open up your My Computer, and then go to your C drive and locate the download or the install location for that program we just installed, and uh, once in, within that directory, we want to go to the bin directory, and we're going to look for, alphabetical order, it's going to be listed as cygwin one dll Here it is. So once you find that file, go ahead and copy it, and then we want to switch over to the OpenSSH directory, which is under Program Files. I'm going to go to the bin directory of this and replace the existing one with this one. So once that's done, we can go and proceed with the next step. Now, this next step may not be mandatory for everyone, but what basically what we do is make sure we have a user account that has no spaces and has a password set up. Some users may not, some of y'all may not have a password set up on your account. So if you don't, you want to make sure you add an extra account or edit your account. So this is my current account. It has the space in it. So what I did was I created a new user called Satan. And you can just create new user or edit user, actually, if you want to add a password. Just make sure you have a user account that's um, one word, 
and has a password for it. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and exit out of that. And next thing we want to do is we want to go to the open SSH directory and we want to go to etc. And within the etc file, uh, directory, we want to open up this sshd underscore config. Um, you can open it with WordPad, whichever. I'm just going to use Notepad C or Notepad Notepad plus plus. Now all these lines, most of these lines are going to be commented. We want to uncomment these top two. Um, this I think defaults to 20 or 22. We want to switch that to 443. Port 443 is the um, what HTTPS, HTTP, uh, the secured connection goes through. All encrypted traffic travels through port 443, and uh, almost all networks, um, any corporate network will have that port unblocked. Um, so we can either use that or port 80, but since we're going to be using encrypted traffic, let's go with 443. So we'll make sure that matches right there. And once you've done that, just X out and save if it prompts you. Um, also, let's open up the ssh underscore config file and just do it with this. And we also want to do the same with the uh, port four, port 220 or 22, whatever is listed there. Switch it to uncommented port 443. And save out of that, close and save out of that. Next thing we want to do is open up command prompt. So let's type CMD. And within command prompt, we want to switch, navigate to the etc directory within open SSH. So I can just actually navigate to that in the GUI interface. And um, within here, I can type in cd for change directory, paste that directory, and I'm in the etc directory. And within here, we're going to type in the make group command. So that's mk group space hyphen l for local. If you're on a domain, you'd use d instead of l. Um, so that's only if you log into a domain server though, which most of you won't be doing. And we want to do a write command or a make file. So do a, uh, I guess that'd be greater than space dot dots etc group. And this will create a group file within the etc directory. Um, with uh, basically it's, it's going to copy all the window or groups that are in the Windows database already. So like administrator, um, um, guest and so forth like that. And it'll create a file. I already created mine so I don't need to do that. But just hit enter after you do that and that should create the file for you. The next one I want to do is mk password. So it's mk pass wd space hyphen l for local and then the write or create command dot dot and then etc let's name it pass wd and hit enter and that will create a file with all the user accounts and passwords associated with them so we can log into this tunnel. One thing I need to mention though is if you are using a 64-bit operating system and um, you install it into the program files directory we want to make sure we switch to the bin directory and locate this right here this is going to be the open SSH service we want to right click on it go to properties and switch over to compatibility and make sure you have this uh, selected the run as program compatibility mode for Windows XP uh, Service Pack 2. Um, it may have some complications when running on 64-bit platforms, so just make sure you check that as well as uh, have it run as an administrator. If you don't use 64-bit though, don't even worry about this step. I just wanted to point that out. Um, now, next step is we need to open up command prompt again and c colon actually change directory to the root of the directory, and we can type in net start net space start open sshd of course I didn't type that right so net start open sshd and it'll say the service is starting give it a moment and it should say it started successfully now um, you may get an issue where it'll tell you it couldn't start or was terminated uh, most likely cases uh, permissions issue if you switch to your C drive program files and the install directory right click properties go to uh, security and locate your user account make sure you have full control as well as administrator make sure both have full control over this directory and make sure it's inherent inherent as well to all uh, subdirectories but anyways once that's out of the way you have the service started we're ready to proceed from here